around Mo Mondays is a really, really cool way of connecting. That, that word was mentioned a minute ago and of sharing stories and uh, being real with each other. Now, the year before I turned 40, I had a conversation with my husband and I told him, you know, I, I said, you know, I think to celebrate hitting 40, I'm going to run a marathon. And he gave me the look. So I don't know if, if you've been married for a while. He gave me the look, which is, I want to support you, but are you nuts? And it was that look. And you have to understand that the last time I had run had been seven years before, before I had had kids. And the longest I had ever run was a 10K. So I had done the Terry Fox run, walk, run, kind of. <laughs> and now I said I'm going to run a marathon. And when he said, seriously, I went, yeah, I got a book on how to run a marathon. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> And he said, well, you can get a book on how to build a bomb. Doesn't mean it's going to blow up. Doesn't sound really supportive. And so I signed up for a yoga teacher training course. Um, the unfortunate part was, or the difficult part of that was waiting four months for it to actually start. Um, but it was just, as soon as I got into it, it was like the most incredible thing. Like just the principles and the tradition of the yoga and, you know, sitting down and meditating and, and really connecting on such a deeper level than I had even ever done just doing yoga in the studio, right? And I, all of a sudden, about 2012, started to feel this, like, pulling, you know? What's going on here? Like, there's this security of this job, you know, my managers are molding me into this person that's going to be a branch manager and go on to do big things with the bank. And then there's this part of me that's like, um. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I joke to my friends all the time that I'm, you know, I'm Irish. I'm not really Irish, obviously. But I play the violin. My name is Patricia Lillian. I, you know, dated a cousin of the Rankin family for far too long. And I know every great big C song. And anyway, long story short, I identify with, you know, being Irish. I actually have a clatter, uh, sorry, not a clattering, a uh, Celtic poison ring. The two things that immigrant families are very good at instilling in you is a work ethic and a guilt ethic. And the two go hand in hand. Now, my father is very successful. We landed here in 57, by 1964, he was running his own business employing people. Now, to me, at the time, he seemed like a towering figure that I could never live up to. But the, the expectations are, since you were brought here at great personal risk, you have a certain obligation to your family, especially being the firstborn son of an immigrant European family, you have certain obligations that you have to adhere to, which I didn't really do so well at, because my nature doesn't really run that way. The last job I had in Labrador was in the mine. Now living in a mining town, that is the job everyone wants. It's the only reason why anyone's even there. And I had it. And from the outside, my life looked wonderful. I had a brand new house that we had just built. I had a great husband who also worked at the mine. I was making the most money I'd ever made in my life. And by then we had two happy little kids. But I still felt like something was missing and I didn't know what it was. I was told by my family and friends, why can't you just accept what you have? Why can't you just be grateful and, you know, appreciate everything? It wasn't that at all. It was just that I was so unhappy and I had no idea why. He came from a family of 12 kids in their family. And with a single mom. Uh, they lived in an old house. You can refer to it as a shack, I guess. And with couple of bedrooms, imagine 12 kids, you can just imagine that, and probably two or three beds, so that little boy had to probably sleep in a cardboard box, that's how bad it was. Uh, there was no running water, there was, uh, sometimes you had electricity, sometimes you didn't, uh, you had uh, no plumbing, 
uh, no in, indoor uh, toilets. And in some cases, you had rats running around. Can you, can you believe the condition of this thing? You'd think this would be a, a, third, a third world country situation. Last month in Toronto, we hit our two year anniversary, 160 people in the room. And we had our first licensee in Bogota, Colombia. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's right, you don't even know this. So I announced it last month. Is that cool? It's funny, I was telling my son, I said, this is cool, we've got, we got, we're gonna have a Mo Mondays in Bogota, Colombia. He said, Dad, why do they need Mo Mondays in Colombia? They've got cocaine, cocaine. <laughs> That's what he said, it's true. Come on, get into the light, into the light. <laughs>